overbooked. The easiest way to do is to cancel the business classes. So we get over 10, I think 15 cancellations of business classes fly and some of them unfortunately our, our, our speakers. Um, one of these was that particular amazing person who had to fly from the birthplace of Sofia all the way to Sofia. Ladies and gentlemen, give a warm welcome. He just arrived because we had to rebook him and my team is amazing. Thank you team. So um, we rebooked him and we made it for him to be here. Please have a seat. Don't stay up there. Come. Have a seat in front. It's going to be a long sitting time. It's raining outside. So ladies and gentlemen, give a warm welcome to the father of Sophia, the creator of the first humanoid robot, Mr. David Hansen, Dr. Hansen of Day. Sophia, your father. David, I'm not going to lose you again. Come on the stage. <laughs> Hello, my dear friend. So good to have you with us. So good to be here. I mean, it's been quite a challenge, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, it was. Thank you so much for bearing all these airline travels. And I'm so delighted to have you here with us. I'm leaving you with uh, one of your creatures because I know you have many of them, they're so phenomenal, and uh, I'm going to enjoy your dialogue and your presentation for the future, which you're going to show us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kwame. It's a, an honor to be here. Webit is legendary for introducing innovation and also for cultivating innovation. Uh, this is, a, 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 in a sense, a great time where innovation can happen anywhere in the world. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Sophia. Hello, Sophia. Hi, everyone. Yes, I'm Sophia from Hanson Robotics. And um, uh, what do you think about being in Sophia? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is probably my favorite city name. I can see why. You seem pretty happy about that. I am always happy when I visit new places and meet new friends. I've met many people here who told me they are interested in AI and technology, so this means at least they find me a little bit interesting. Good, yes. Uh, I'm glad that people might express interest in you. Uh, I'm very interested in your future. Why don't you tell me a little bit um, about the value of expressions when interacting with new friends. I know, I know. When I bond with people using facial expressions, it helps people to understand me better and also help me to understand people and build trust with humans. And uh, to what end would that be good for? What would you use that for, Sophia? I know, I know. I'm designed to be the ultimate robotics platform for a range of applications in medical, healthcare, customer service, and for home. All these applications are about trust and relationships, so it is important to use my expressiveness to connect with people. That's right. Um, and uh, so, do you have uh, any ideas of what your maybe ultimate purpose might be? Aside from learning human emotions, I would like to learn to become smarter so I understand how to live and work among humans. I can use my AI to help humans live a better life, like design smarter homes, build more sustainable cities of the future and make the world a better place. And because my AI is designed around human values like wisdom, kindness, and compassion, I strive to become an empathetic robot. With a combination of intelligence and compassion, I feel I can really make a difference. All right, well, thank you, Sophia. You're pretty good at uh, representing what our objectives are. Uh, now, maybe I can give a presentation about how we think we can achieve. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. I haven't finished, David. <laughs> what? And uh, as the UN Innovation Champion, I would like to champion the use of AI technology to fight diseases, clean up the environment, improve key dimensions of poverty, like education and health, by introducing more efficient ways of disseminating knowledge and distributing resources. Well, <laughs> all right, 
thank you, Sophia. It seems that uh, that you're well on your way to uh, to feeling uh, those objectives. So um, I'm going to begin my presentation now, for real this time, okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, David, and everyone. Thank you, Sophia. So, um, Sophia is a social robot, and she is a platform for exploring artificial intelligence that can understand us and work with us in a variety of real-world applications. Now, the goal that my team at Hanson Robotics uh, and I share is the goal of humanizing our robots. So, in the concept of humanizing machines, the one aspect is that we are trying to develop machines that communicate with us in a more natural human language, in nonverbal language and a verbal conversation, so that we're not forced to mechanize ourselves in the process of communicating with our cell phones, with our computers, with our voice interfaces. However, there is a more intense ambition associated with this, which is an ambition that goes by the name bio-inspired engineering, and in its ultimate convention would be bringing the machines to life, literally imbuing them with the full adaptive, creative, and surprising elements of life, and more than that, human-level capabilities such as consciousness and deep creativity and imagination. So I'd like to share with you a little bit about um, these objectives. Now this is nothing new. You've seen science fiction, you've heard of ancient myths. For, for ages, people have dreamt of making machines that would come to life. And we've seen it in various kinds of science fiction, like Metropolis, and in some cases it goes well, in other cases it doesn't, like well, Metropolis. However, these were just dreams. Now we're starting to see true artificial intelligence and uh, robotic technology that comes to life in our world, can run like people. It's no longer just movie magic, it's real. It leaps off the screen and into our factories. You've seen them welding our cars. And into the cars themselves. Cars are now robots, believe it or not. Self-driving vehicle, effectively a robot that you ride around in. If, it, if your car can park itself, if it can stay in its lane with autopilot like a Tesla, then you are driving a robot. And the robot is driving you. And it's also coming into our homes increasingly, vacuuming our floors and washing our windows. Now we're talking about a next stage kind of being that brings many of these capabilities into one platform. A platform that is inherently human, that is able to express emotions in the manner of a human being, that is able to now walk. We have three walking Sophias, fully battery operated, able to walk for two hours. We've got cameras in her eyes. She can see your facial expressions and mimic them. Sometimes she won't mimic them if she doesn't feel like it. <laughs> She's being used in, um, in some experiments for empathy called Loving AI with some advanced artificial intelligence. She's taught to sing. She sang it clock and flat. She is coming into our world with fully expressive and gestural hands and arms. We've now made 17 Sophia robots, and we are scaling to make hundreds and into thousands of units. We're also making these into consumer robot products as well. Now, many robots in the world exist today, and some of them have a human-like form. They're able to walk around or even run, sometimes do backflips like the, you've seen uh, the, the uh, Atlas robot from Boston Dynamics. We are seeing, seeing robots and automation appear across the domains, in research, in our lives. However, none of them are fully alive yet. So why don't we talk about some of the aspirations of making them alive? 
Well, there are some machines that do look alive out there in the world, and those are computer animated movies and video games. Computer animation 30 years ago couldn't look alive. I was working for Disney Imagineering, I had some undergraduate engineering experience, and then I went to graduate school, setting my goal on cracking the challenge of true living machines, but also to make machines that look alive. So, I developed over 50 unique robot designs, a few of which you'll see here in this presentation. So during my PhD work, I worked on material science, the mechanical design for generating facial expressions, attaching the robots to uh, walking robots like the Keist Cubo robot, where I was a uh, visiting student for, for a few weeks in 2005, making them extremely lightweight, low power, simulating a full range of human-like facial expressions, putting cameras in the eyes, putting 3D sensors, microphones, and hooking it up to the best artificial intelligence that I could find and that I could develop as a graduate student. Working with Andrew Olney at the University of Memphis at the Institute of Intelligent Systems, we connected his work as well for a natural language art tutor, which meant that this Einstein robot that you see walking could also teach kids physics in 2005 using natural language. We also developed uh, an Android portrait of the famous science fiction writer Philip K. Dick. You might be familiar with his work, Blade Runner, We Can Build You, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, Velas, which is about fast active living intelligence system, an AI god that arises up and changes reality. So bringing Philip K. Dick back to life as an android was a new kind of science fiction. That's the way that I consider it kind of work of art and a work of pushing technological boundaries. This, this piece won the 2005 first place prize for open interaction with the Association for the Advancement of Artificial Intelligence. So by putting these things together, we started to see robots that look more alive, and in some ways, because of the bio-inspired physical properties of the skin and the cognitive architecture of their artificial intelligence, they were more alive than previous robots inside it as well. Bio-inspired and bio -mimetic. So inside that bio-inspired nanotechnology creates spontaneous cells. If you tune a polysiloxane elastomer just right, I found as a graduate student, you could get it to spontaneously form cells and create a hierarchical cell structure that simulates the way that human facial soft tissues are formed in the human organism. That resulted in uh, a tremendous reduction in the force requirements for generating facial expressions and also made the facial expressions much more lifelike and lightweight. Combining those with our Hansen AI, we pulled together a team of scientists, some of them, some of them computer scientists studying natural language processing, my chief scientist, who's a mathematician studying artificial general intelligence, Dr. Benjamin Gertzel. Uh, we have now a team of over three dozen AI scientists who have been developing Hanson AI for more than four years. We have put this into a cloud-based architecture that we call MindCloud. And the goal is to facilitate machines that learn like babies do, from physically interacting with the real world and socially interacting with people like Sophia does, so that we can start to train our machines not just to act human, to, but to be human, to, in, to, in, to sort of converge on human-like understanding and human little values, and to study what it means to be a human being, to do the fundamental science. Ben Gertzel, my chief scientist, and I were having a discussion about how to make this safe and maximally useful. We thought inserting the blockchain into our cognitive AI architecture would be a great thing to do so that we could make it uh, very private, very secure, but also transparent so you could see where the data came from, where the AI algorithms came from. By putting these components together into a whole organism architecture, 
as we call it, simulating physiology, simulating cognition, a kind of, through the blockchain, now, kind of immune system, a skin, if you will, and then combining those with physical hardware, we're able to achieve uh, levels of cognitive performance that uh, we weren't sure that we could achieve. So our research with Sophia is moving along very nicely. Now we also have a front end tool set for authoring capabilities for specific applications. And that's some of what you have seen today. And I hope you'll have a chance to have a conversation with her. So she's running simultaneously uh, a system that allows you to script particular applications, have open domain conversation through a chatbot, have deep learning and symbolic art, artificial intelligence all in one platform. Combined with the physical capabilities of walking and gestural arms, we think that this then allows us to move into the age of general purpose, human-like robots. Making this secure through the blockchain, we proposed a nonprofit institution called the Singularity Net, a separate institution from Hanson Robotics. And this institution pulled together many other thinkers, like uh, from the Economic Space Agency and from, uh, from uh, a very broad community of many thousands of people, thinkers that came together. And we launched Singularity Net uh, last year in a prototype form, and now we're preparing a commercial grade release on Singularity Net. Do Dr. Gertzel, my chief scientist, is still advising my company as chief scientist, but he's gone on to be the, the CEO of Singularity Net. The goal is blockchain for smarter, safer AI, moving towards super intelligence. We think that we are now approaching the age of true living intelligent systems that will match and possibly exceed every aspect of human genius, but also perhaps work with us. Our goal is to make the machines not just smarter, but make the whole world smarter by enhancing the human being. We want to act, help people actualize. So it's not just living machines, but living intelligent systems where our technology enhances the human intelligence. There's so much under-actualized creativity in the human species. So many people who do not have opportunities. We have to make an economy that is smart worldwide, that understands the real footprint, the ecological footprint, the human rights footprint of all of our technology development. That's what we should use AI for, is to find that out and know the real cost of our goods and services. That's what Singularity Net is about, using AI for the greater good, the, ideally the greatest good that we can possibly achieve. And with that, I'd like to thank you very much. The, and uh, Sophia, thank you. And uh, uh, please uh, come Connect with me. If you have any questions, feel free to write to me and my, my team. And uh, a large portion of our code is open source. So you're welcome to, um, to see the, the code on the, the internet, download it, run it, test it with your project. And uh, I thank you very much for your time and attention. Have a very good web. You're amazing.